let's say you've been playing in a Minecraft world for a big while. And you might have done some things in your world that you kind of regret. Then what instead of restarting your world, you select the chunks which you don't like and delete them. Meaning the next time you join your world, they will be regenerated and everything will be reset. Or let's say there's a specific build inside of your world that you want to send to a friend. But the world file is way too big. Well, what if you just select every single chunk that your build isn't in and then delete it so that the world file upon sending will be very, very small? Well, both of these are things you can do with the tool we're gonna have a look at today. It is called the MCA selector. And what it allows you to do in their own words is literally select chunks from on Minecraft worlds for deletion and export. So MCA selector works really straightforward. After importing a world, you will simply get a big map. And on that map, you can start selecting chunks. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with those chunks. Let me show you. So of course, there will be a link to this GitHub page in the description down below. Simply click on releases here on the right. And then you can choose between the .jar, which is the universal installer, but does require you to have the correct version of Java installed, or the .exe, which is of course exclusive to Windows, but no Java required whatsoever. So in my case, I'm gonna go for the .exe, simply click to download. And after following all of the installation steps, this is the menu which should eventually open. So currently there's not a whole lot going on here. We can zoom in and out, but there is no actual world. So first we need to import one. To do that, simply go to file and after that click on open world. And over here you simply want to navigate to your saves. By default it will open the vanilla saves folder, which is nice. But if you're using a third party launcher like Mudrinth or Prism, you have to navigate to the appropriate saves folder yourself. Now upon finding your world, you should Definitely subscribe to the channel. We recently surpassed 100,000 subscribers, but at the same time, still more than 80% of my daily viewers is not actually subscribed, which is such a huge percentage. There's a big chance you might think you are subscribed, but you may not actually be in reality. So if you could just double check if you actually are, I would appreciate it so much. Let's aim for the 200k. But okay, simply make sure to select your world, and over here it wants you to select a dimension. Now, as far as I can remember, Dim1 wasn't actually a name of a dimension. <laughs> but this is of course the folder that the dimension is saved in. So just so you know, inside of the region folder, that is where the overworld is saved. The Dim-1 folder, that is where the nether is saved. And then in the regular Dim1 folder, so no dash, that is where the end is saved. So currently you can see, I only have two options, which is because I I never went to the end. This is the overworld and this is the nether. So let's simply load in the overworld for now. Let's click on OK and there we go. You can see I've not done a lot of uh, exploration, but these are currently all of the chunks which are loaded inside of this Minecraft world. Now I'm simply moving around here with WASD. As you can zoom in and out with your scroll wheel and we can now start selecting chunks and modifying them. But before we do that, there is one really important thing which you have to do first. Please make a backup. Make a backup of your world before modifying anything. After modifying something, there is no simple Ctrl Z to undo it. By using this program, we're gonna physically delete files from the world folder. Meaning after we've changed it, there is no going back. The files will be gone. So please, please, please make a backup of your world first before modifying anything. So if you accidentally mess up, it's not the end of your world. With that being said, I'm gonna do some quick building here, just so you can have a nice visual representation of how this world resetting actually works. I'm so good at building in Minecraft, it is crazy. <laughs> this is perfect. Alright, well then, that should be pretty noticeable. Cool, my job here is done. We're back again in MCA Selector. Do take note that it will not update automatically. You do have to re-import your world after changing something, which I've just done. But if you actually do that, then uh, uh, th there we go. That is what I've just built. Now, let's be honest for a bit. 
it's maybe not the most beautiful thing I've ever made. I mean, it's close. It's close. But I have in my lifetime built more beautiful things inside of Minecraft. And there might be a chance that we we don't want this in the world. What we can do is we can simply select these chunks. All of the chunks that have been quote unquote ruined. Something like this. This way, we're sure that everything is selected. And if you now want to delete these chunks, all you have to do is go to selection in the top left. And over here, click on delete selected chunks. Simply click. After that, it will warn you because this is going to be a permanent change. There's no going back. So again, do make sure you have a backup. But when we now click on OK, those chunks are now gone. Now you might think to yourself, okay, Kasai, what does it mean for these chunks to be gone? These chunks are literally in the middle of the world. Well, yes, they are. But the chunks now being deleted means that as soon as we now enter this world again, they will be regenerated. And if they get regenerated, all the stuff I built will, of course, no longer be in there. Now, okay, let's say you don't want to delete something from your world like this, but you want to preserve a few chunks and you want to delete the rest. For example, let's say a new Minecraft update has released. A new Minecraft update which adds a new ore, for example. Or some other cool new biomes. And you don't want to start a completely new world, because you don't want to lose your house and everything that you've built, but you would like those new biomes to be generated close to home. Well, something you can do is select the region that your home is in. So, for example, I'll select this square. Just imagine there's a beautiful building in there. <laughs> and now we want to to make sure we preserve these chunks but we want to delete everything else so it gets regenerated what we can do is go to selection and then click on invert selected regions now you can see it deselects what i've just selected and it now selects everything else now you can see it has not selected everything everything it has just selected one of these big squares and you can simply go ahead and select the rest too and then you can simply delete it all but it's a really handy tool especially if you want to say for example only this island something like this then now if you invert the selection there we go it will now perfectly preserve what you've selected and you can now simply delete everything else now let's say you don't want to delete chunks from your world but you just want to export some chunks because you for example want to send a certain build in your survival world to your friends but you don't want to send them the entire world well what you can do is just select the chunks you want to export after that go to selection and then click on export selected chunks then you want to make sure you create a folder i'm gonna call mine uh, world export i'm gonna select this one then it will give me a warning you are about to export 36 chunks from this world that sounds perfect let's do it there we go and now you can see your world has been successfully exported it has created all the necessary folders and files you need to send your world over to your friend for example now, if you want, you can even import chunks from other worlds. So if you go to tools and after that import chunks, you can select the world folder and then it will give you this warning. You are about to import an unknown number of chunks. I'm going to simply click on OK and there we go. It's importing. Now, obviously, nothing has changed here. I'm importing chunks from this world to the same world. So you won't see a difference, but this is how you could, for example, import certain biomes or certain builds into another Minecraft world, which is pretty cool. Now, something else pretty cool which you can do is filter certain chunks. So when we go to tools and after that to filter chunks, you are able to create different filters over here. Now you can choose yourself if you want the filtered chunks to either be selected, exported or deleted. You can also make it so these filters only apply to an already selected area, which I currently don't have. But you can filter a bunch of cool stuff here. We can, for example, select palette and palette allows you to select a certain block so when we enter sand here what it will do is it will filter all of the chunks and it will make sure to only select chunks that contain sand so there we go currently all of the chunks in this world that contain sand have been selected that's pretty cool and we could for example delete them all if we 
hate sand for some reason. <laughs> now, of course, they will be regenerated if you use the same version of Minecraft and the same seed. But it's pretty cool how this works. And there's, of course, a whole bunch of stuff you can filter. So you can filter on data version, inhabited time, which is pretty cool. This basically allows you to set a certain time, for example, a minute or an hour. And then it will select chunks you've been in for that amount of time. So what we can, for example, do is select all the places that we've been in for less than five seconds. Um, and you can see that is the majority of the world. <laughs> this world has not been around for that long. Now you can also filter biomes, you can filter statuses, you can filter player locations, player spawn, structures as well. There are so many different options here, which is awesome. Now, when I now go back inside of my Minecraft world, after, of course, deleting those chunks, you can see that all of the damage I did to this world is now gone. We made sure to select it and delete it all. And there is no longer obsidian here and lava. It just looks normal again. Now, of course, do keep in mind that it looks normal because I'm currently using the same seed in the same version of Minecraft. If I would change my seed, then the regenerated terrain would start to look very different. But maybe if you're playing in a very old world and you want some new up-to-date biomes around your house, that is exactly what you want. And that's gonna be it for today. Do make sure to subscribe to my channel, join my Discord, thank you so much channel members, and then I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye, see you later, bye-bye!